study of the manuscripts, the Bible, the authorized uh, word of God that is preserved and is beneficial for us. Amen. Let's read the very words of the Lord Jesus in the Gospel of uh, Luke chapter 4 and then verse 4. Just one verse together to give honor to the glory of God and to His Word. And Jesus answered him saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Father, we thank you for your word. If the Lord Jesus said that, we need to say it also. And if the Lord Jesus followed that line of assurance, we will follow that line of assurance as well. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we believe that we will keep your word, preserve your word, and honor your word. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank you. I liked what my wife said the other day about the Lord Jesus said, can you imagine the Lord Jesus? The Lord Jesus uh, could have uh, saying he, he could have said, the Lord spoke to me, yet he said, it is written. Studying um, these religions, false religions around us, what I see is that people are very much based on experience. I saw that. And then they start describing something very strange. And because they use these that I've experienced, that I saw it. Yet the Word of God says there is nothing to wonder, wonder about it, to wonder uh, about uh, even the devil Satan he can take on another shape and another feature just to show he, he uh, turns out he transforms uh, in a way not that word but he transforms himself to be an angel of light and an angel of God just because somebody saw an angel and it was light it doesn't mean it was God or from God, it could very, um, in the same way, mean that uh, it could be de the devil. But how do we know it? The only way we could know it is through the written word of God. So if the Lord Jesus, the perfect man who, could, who had perfect relationship, and he said, Father, I pray that they will be one as we are one. So the Lord Jesus, the perfect man with perfect, perfect harmony with the will of the Father, God who came in the flesh, lived the perfect life, and yet he, he didn't say, God spoke to me, or I've seen that he said, it is written to show us the path of discerning what is right and what is wrong. And so he chooses that path of assurance. We are assured only if it's sola scriptura, if it's the word, if, we, we, if our faith is based in the authority of the word of God. Amen. So let us go now to the rest of the charts uh, that we started last week. And from PowerPoint uh, slide 14, please. We're going to the book of John, chapter 6, and verse 47. If I remember well, the charts are taken from this book. The, the, the charts that we project are from this book. This is a very good book on the subject. Uh, it's from um, Gail Ripplinger, and she, she's, she's really a godly woman, and that's many years ago, but it's, it's, 
it's one of the best on the subject and it's the most exhaustive on the subject and it's called New Age Bible Versions and uh, it, uh, it talks about the NIV, NASB, NKJV, NRSV, NAB, REB, RSV, CEV, uh, TEV, GNB, Living, Philips, New Jerusalem, New Century, and so on and so forth. So this is an exhaustive book on the subject, very good, and from a really uh, godly woman that uh, she is a linguist and she, she was a professor at the university and uh, she had a heart of helping her students and started giving them verses and then uh, her students went home and search, uh, searched for this verse and they couldn't find it because everybody was going with their own versions. Then she realized what, it, what, what was going on and so it's a, it's a huge story. But anyway, just to see uh, another example, a classic example of what is happening between the modern versions which are based on the false manuscripts and the fake manuscripts of Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, the Alexandrian uh, school of thought and uh, manuscripts. We don't follow the Alexandrian, we follow the Antiochian uh, or Antiochian as uh, they can uh, pronounce it, from Antioch, Antiochia, Syria. So the, the church there, that's the church in the book of Acts, chapter 13. Paul and Barnabas and Silas and all of the prophets and the apostles and James, uh, the apostle. So we see them all in the, in the church in Antioch right after uh, in the book of Acts, as the church was dispersed uh, because of the persecution. So Antioch kept the right manuscripts that we have today, and we call them uh, in, in one way, the Textus Receptus. There are many other branches of manuscripts, but just know the basics. So the new, the modern versions uh, started using the fake manuscripts, and then that's the problem right there. See what it says in John 6, 47. The Lord Jesus speaks and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you. He that believeth, I put, uh, I highlighted, underlined, bold. All of this is done by me to show you. Uh, uh, what is that you cannot find it this way in the Bible I just added the highlight for you to see what's missing so see what's missing the Lord Jesus said he that believeth on me hath everlasting life see the ASV, ASV um, American Standard Version then New American Standard Version followed but see what it says verily verily I say unto you he that believeth has eternal life. It's almost impossible if you don't, um, if you just go directly to the uh, modern versions and you just, you just say, he that believeth hath uh, eternal life, you will not even miss it. You will not even realize it unless you've been exposed to the original, unless you've been exposed. Now listen to this. I don't want to say the word because I don't want the program interrupted. Alexerde, you know I use the the system. You ask <laughs> Alpha Yoda Stangliga. Anyway, wrote, uh, I asked it uh, for um, on on one subject. Uh, give me. King KJV, give me KJV verses on the subject, on this subject. So um, I got about 10 verses. So I said, okay, good. Then I realized it was not King James, even though he asked, I asked for it. And that thing is supposed to be smart. 
And it's very smart because it's got all the information. It's like just a computer. So it, it gave me, even though the, 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 the instructions I gave, it was very clear. Capital letters give me KJV verses on the subject of the authority of Scripture. Gives me the verses. I just go over it and that um, I just picked it immediately. Um, uh, I saw one word. I said, that's not King James. And then I write again from King James. Then gives me the 10 verses again. Same way without giving me the King James. Gave me something else. So anyway, I wrote uh, third time, give me King James verses. And then he says, thank you for the clarification. Thank you for clarifying. So it gave me the King James verses. And I said, even that thing is deceived. Because the ones that program did are liberals. So you see, uh, th there is an attack on the authority of Scripture. And there is an attack on the character of God. And there is a, an attack on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. What it says, the Lord Jesus, he that believeth on me. So you wouldn't even realize. Let me give you an example that it happened to me yesterday. I was reading and uh, I have it on, a, on an email. I, I, was, I was reading. Let me find it for just a second. I, I know the, the verse of scripture that uh, uh, what it talks about, but I just wanted to see the difference, okay? Um, so shall, so the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. So I wanted, to, because, because um, you know, there is um, uh, so much discussion about the, the elect, elect. And who are the elect? And because uh, I'm studying the Greek, uh, the, the, the Greek version, uh, the, uh, the, in, the text in Greek, so I know it's eklektos. And then, uh, you know, I'm trying, diff I'm trying, I'm trying the, other, uh, uh, the other versions. Of course, the King James Bible gives us uh, the whole thing. He brought it as thelos in his eskadi, eskadi brodi. Listen to this. Many are called, few are chosen. If we, if we go to any modern version or even in the Greek, the second part is missing. It says, so the last shall be first and the first last. I was looking here and there, going back and forth. And I, I didn't know that it was not there. So uh, it's very easy for us not to notice it unless somebody tells us about it. So that's the case. Uh, you know, uh, the last shall be first and the first last. So uh, the Lord will do just about anything. They leave, uh, they leave out, many are called but few are chosen. But this is very serious. Because the Lord Jesus, he that believeth on me. Let's go to the next one and see. The ASV says, he that believeth. Uh, the disciples, um, the DLT, did the same thing. The one believing has eternal life. Now, what does New Age say? New Age say, they say uh, that uh, whatever you believe, you know, I'm glad you believe in Jesus. But don't tell me. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And there is not another way. You know, the, the, if you want to find out if somebody is a new ager, meaning all kinds of other religious and philosophies, 
if you want to find out, just focus on the exclusivity of the Lord Jesus' um, exclusive uh, declaration that he is the only way. There is no other way. So they will say, I believe in Jesus too. They, they will say, even Muslims, they will say they believe in Jesus. But that's another Jesus. Our Jesus is the true Jesus, is God who came in the flesh. I don't care to who I, 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 I'm talking. I just say the word of God. The Lord Jesus is not just the Messiah. He is God in the flesh. That's what the Bible says. The Jewish people have to hear that. The Muslims have to hear that. It's not the Jesus that you're saying. That's another Jesus. Our Jesus is God in the flesh. Fully God, fully man. He will forever be king. He's coming back. He's the only one resurrected. So, uh, everyone who believes uh, can be saved. ERV, he that believeth. ESV, whoever believes has, has eternal life. Whoever believes. Holman uh, Bible says, I assure you anyone who believes has eternal life. Just believe. If, if it makes you feel good, just believe. The doctors will say that. The psychologists would say that. Well, if you, if you be, it's good to believe just in anything. So, next uh, slide, please. We go beyond that and we see the next one. Um, West Cotton Hort, WH, West Cotton Hort. That's the false fake. Um, uh, that's the ones that started this movement against the word of God. Amin, amin, lego, amin, opistevon, echizoineonion. Metaglottisi, ελληνικά, ελληνικά. Όποιος πιστεύει έχει ζωή αιώνια. Στη δημοτική, στη δημοτική που είναι εύκολα. Στη δημοτική που είναι εύκολα. Οκ, okay. εντάξει, δεν με πειράζει τι είδους γλώσσα είναι. Σίγουρα θα το κάνεις όσο πιο εύκολο γίνεται. Το πρόβλημα δεν είναι γλωσσολογικό, το πρόβλημα είναι θεολογικό και να το πρόβλημα εκεί. Δημοτική που είναι εύκολα. Να τη δημοτική που είναι εύκολα. Όποιος πιστεύει έχει ζωή αιώνια. Γιατί, γιατί στηρίζονται πάνω στο West Cotton Hort και όχι πάνω στο TR, το Textus Preceptus, που σημαίνει το κείμενο παραδεδεγμένο, το κείμενο που χρησιμοποιήσε η Εκκλησία. They don't use, that, that's the Greek, modern Greek, easy to read, they are based on the wrong manuscripts. Whoever believes. TR, TR, A, the A just means accented. It means has uh, a tonus. So it says, Opistevon is a me. That's the textus receptus. That's the text that the church used for all the centuries from the start to now. Next one, please. In PowerPoint. Now we go to Acts 8.37. And Philip said, If thou believest with, the, with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What is this talking about? Philip was evangelizing the eunuch and the Ethiopian eunuch. And the Ethiopian eunuch believed and he saw some uh, place of little water, place of water, and he said, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. That's the doctrine of water baptism. Little children, infants cannot really believe with all their heart. And they don't even need to repent because to them belongs the kingdom of God. But once they come to uh, uh, the age of accountability, then they realize they've sinned against God. They feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. They realize they are sinners and they guilt. They feel again, uh, uh, 
in uh, standing before God. So they come to the Lord for repentance because they believe with all their heart, then they can. So, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Uh, below is the textus receptus in Greek. Then the Lexum, Lexum English Bible. You may not know it, but uh, all of those theologians, liberal theologians out there, this is one of the most important versions for them. Uh, sounds very sophisticated, very scholarly, scholarly. Now, so what, what does it say there? Can you tell me please? Highlight it. It's, it's exactly as you see it, except the highlight. 37, it's just a number without content. So in some Bibles, they see the number and they go to the 38. They don't even realize that this is what they get. 37, it's not even there. That's what they have, the number. Next one, please. The uh, Lexham Bible, that, that's how it looks. 36, 38, 37, missing. West Cotton Hort, exactly as you see it. 36, 38, 37. They've got to put the number there because if they move the number to 38, they realize they will find out because it doesn't correspond to the verses uh, of other Bibles that have it in. So they've got to have the number. So 38 uh, goes and agrees with the, with the rest. So it's not there. Next. We now go to 1 Timothy 3.16, which is very, this is huge. This is absolutely huge. It's not a matter of um, language. It's a theological problem right here. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, just in case you didn't get it. Who was justified in the spirit? The Lord Jesus. Amen. The Lord Jesus in Romans uh, tells us, Evigothi and Benevimati. Amen. He was justified uh, in the spirit. Seen of angels and preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. Received up into glory. That's the ascen ascension in the book of Acts chapter 1. So who is that talking about? The Lord Jesus. But because it's very strong and everything, there are six characteristics. Manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Six descriptions of the Lord Jesus, very direct. So nobody can doubt that. But they want to disconnect the very clear word God and change it because they cannot just not put anything there. So see the evilness of these kind of people in it's not just a, you know, linguistic problem. It's evil, it's satanic, and this is involving demonic activity trying to change the word of God. Now, see what it says here. In ASV, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. He. Who? He who? He who was manifest. So, they, they just say it's the same thing, he. No, no, no. It says God. It says God. Of course, 
uh, the so-called witnesses will just tell you this. I, I said, uh, whenever they tell me, it was not in the main manuscripts. I said, this is your problem. I believe the word of God and textus receptus, the word of God written and delivered to the church for centuries and millennia. Now we have it for so long. It's your problem. If you don't want to accept it, that's your problem. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't say he, it says God. Okay. Next. Disciples, literal New Testament. Who? DRC. Which was manifest? He who, which? Then, next slide. EBR, who? ERV, English Revised Version. He who? Then ESV, again, one of the most popular. Uh, and the sad thing is those who go to theological schools, they're exposed to these kind of, kinds of versions. ESV, as opposed to uh, New International Version in, in previously and everything. ESV now is one of the most studied ones by theological students. Can you imagine those who prepare to preach from the pulpit, they are highly trained on the wrong manuscripts and they don't even know it. One good example is brother David Davis. David Davis, he was uh, very much educated. Uh, he finished Fuller Theological Seminary, very known school uh, about uh, theology. So Anyway, uh, he found out about the truth, but he was exposed throughout the years uh, with these wrong versions. So you see people that are very educated, they, they're just ignorant of the reality of what they've done to the true word of God. It's not that they are not well educated, they are well educated on the wrong material. So they don't know about the truth. Somebody needs to tell them. Now, this uh, brother, David uh, Davis, from Chick Publications, Chick, C-H-I-C Publications, uh, has so many studies on this subject. And uh, uh, he's been teaching that for 30 years now, the right teaching. Now, ESV, he, uh, ISV, International Standard Version, he, he again. Next one, was caught in heart? Uh, okay, that's why they translated to he because of Westcott and Hort. These two evil men that were spirit challengers, as I told you many times, you can go and find for yourself. No need to do that, but if you want to, you can do your own research and you find out who these two people are. Didn't even believe in God, didn't want to believe in God, didn't want uh, people to believe in God. So that's their work in, uh, in the 19th century towards the end around 1890, something like that, uh, between the, that decade, 1880 and 1890. But anyway, you see this going on, starting with Westcott and Hort, then everybody follows their changed manuscripts. So they, they see os. Os in the Greek is just anaphorgandonimia, anaferede, seatomo, aftos. Os, aftos. So they rightly translated he, but from the wrong one, which is os. Now the problem is that I hope I have it. Yes, I have it with me. I showed it that before also to you. But, and then metaglottisi, vimodiki, modern Greek, aftos, because it's based on that one. Then we come at the end. See the os, see it very well, see it good. Now let's go uh, to the next one, the last one, last slide. And it says, Theos, 
εφανερώθη εν σαρκή. Θεός. Now I, I'm going to talk to you about the definite article because uh, people will, uh, especially the witnesses, the cults and all of these that don't, they don't believe in the divinity of the Lord Jesus will come and tell you that um, it doesn't say uh, o theos, ho theos, and they will pronounce the ho, o. Uh, the definite article that is needed in the Greek language, but there is a rule that shows that if you realize if the context shows clearly that it refers about the true God, ton Theos, then you don't need to put it because we know it's talking about the true God. And I can give you scripture upon scripture. I gathered so many of them that shows God without definite article doesn't need to be there. But if you listen to uh, their, um, w what they argue about, you will find it a little, bit, a little bit difficult because you say, but it needs the difficult article. It doesn't need it because it shows exactly what it's talking about. So, uh, West Cotton Hort say, os, and then the tear says, theos. So, you see, this is the whole word, theos. But, you see the evilness of West Cotton Hort and the modern versions? So the easy way out and sounds the same is just to cut the first piece out and it's just os that means he. This is just, this is just a pronoun. This is just a pronoun, okay? He, os. But if you put theos, that means God. Almighty. So this is very evil what they are doing. And uh, um, of course, they are paying with their own lives. And people have come to a very um, desperate uh, stage in their lives when they found out what they've done to the Word of God. Like uh, what we started with our study in the beginning when I told you about the Dr. Frank Longstone, the co-founder of the New American Standard Bible, he, s he said with his own words, I must under God renounce every attachment to the New American Standard Version. I'm afraid. I'm in trouble with the Lord. Then he renounced any, uh, uh, he publicly renounced any uh, any connection and disassociated himself from the NASB. This means, he said, the rest of my life will be devoted to go and tell people not to believe these versions. He was a very, very educated man until somebody faced him with a textus receptus and uh, he gave him uh, he knew about them, but he had never studied them. Very educated, but not on the right manuscripts. Um, let's go to Genesis, uh, excuse me, Deuteronomy, chapter 9, verse 8. 10 says and the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God and on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly that's the word of God and we close along these lines with um, Psalms 12. We've said it many times, but it's, be it's a beautiful portion of Scripture. 12, 6 and 7. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried 
in a furnace of earth purified seven times. We just read God wrote these words with, the, with his finger and he spake out of the midst of the fire. Then here it says that the words of God are pure words as silver tried in furnace in a furnace of earth purified seven times out of the fire thou shalt keep them O lord thou shalt preserve them from this generation and forever father we receive your word as being your word and nothing less than that we adore you and bless you and love you and say father god it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of god and that which was proceeded out of the mouth of god was written and today we have all the words of god and we will believe them keep them spread them and tell everyone about the preserved word of God. Amen.